Hello friends, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will start with vSAM introduction. So this is the agenda, introduction to vSAM, characteristics, then we will learn about vSAM cluster, control area and control interval. So first we will start with introduction. vSAM stands for virtual storage access method. So vSAM is a file storage access method which is used in MVS, ZOS and OS390 operating systems. It, is, it was introduced by IBM in 1970 and it is a high performance access method used to organize data in form of file in mainframes. Why we felt a need of vSAM file? We have PS files in mainframe but still why vSAM files were introduced by IBM. So these are some of the characteristics which differentiate it from the normal PS file. PS is physical sequential file. So it protects data against unauthorized access by using password. In PS file you cannot use passwords but in a vSAM file you can use password to protect your data. Then it provides fast access to data sets and it has options for optimizing the performance. Also it allows data set sharing in both batch and online environment and it is more structured and organized in storing data. So now next is a vSAM cluster. Before using a vSAM file you need to create a vSAM cluster for this. So vSAM are the logical data sets for storing records and are known as vSAM clusters. So a cluster is an association of index, sequence set and data proportions of data sets. The space occupied by a vSAM cluster is divided in contiguous areas called control intervals which we will study in next slide. So there are two type of components in a vSAM cluster. One is index component, another one is data components. It's not necessary that all the vSAM files will have an index component. Index component is there only for KSDS file which we will learn in coming videos. So index component contains the index part. Index records are present in index component and it uses index component. vSAM is able to retrieve records from the data components. So that's the reason we can just put in our key and it will fetch the record. Then we have data component, it contains the actual data. So next is control interval. Control intervals are equivalent to blocks in our PS files. So in vSAM files, instead of blocks, we use control intervals. So they are the smallest unit of transfer between a disk and the operating system. Whenever a record is retrieved directly from the storage, the entire CI containing the record is read into vSAM input output buffer. Then the desired record is then transferred to the work area. So this is how a control interval looks like. So from R1 to R5, the records are stored. Then we have FS, that, that's a free space. So which can be used for further expansion of data set. Then we have RDF. So RDF is known as record definition fields. RDF are three bytes long and it describes the length of records and tells how many adjacent records are of the same length. Then we have CIDF. So CIDF is known as control interval definition fields. CIDF are four byte longs and contains information about the control interval. So next we have control area. So putting two or more control, control intervals together forms a control area. A vSAM data set is composed of one or more control areas and the size of vSAM is always a multiple of its control area. vSAM files are extended in units of control areas. So in the next video, we'll learn how to define cluster.